Election Day, two weeks from today. And history could be made if Attorney General Maura Healey is elected governor. She would be the first woman elected governor in the state's history. Joining us now, Amanda Hunter, the executive director of the Barbara Lee Family Foundation, which has studied the challenges and opportunities for women as they face uh, to run for office in the last 20 years. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. So she would be the first elected woman. Well, obviously, we've had a female governor before. Right, and it's been 20 years since we've had a woman governor here in Massachusetts. So a lot of voters may not remember seeing a woman running the state. And that's important because at the foundation, we found that voters can have what we call an imagination barrier. They can't picture a woman mm. in the top job. When we ask voters to picture a governor, a majority still picture a man. So simply huh. seeing a woman do the job breaks down the barrier and opens the door for more women to get elected. Of course, we had Jane Swift decades ago, but she was not elected. More Healy would be the first elected. The lieutenant governor's race could also be historic. Absolutely. So that's another barrier that we could break if both Kim Driscoll and Maura Healey are elected. Believe it or not, two women have never been sent to the corner office in history mm. before wow. together as a ticket. So we join a few other states in potentially breaking that barrier in a couple of weeks. And women nearly swept the Democratic primary statewide offices last month. And this also is a major shift for the state. Absolutely. There's a reason that my boss, Barbara Lee, who started the foundation, calls Massachusetts the original old boys club. Because for so many years, these positions were dominated by men. And we know from our research, when women seek executive office, like the statewide positions, voters need a lot more evidence that women are up to the job. They want more evidence, but when women run, they often tend to win. And we just saw that with the primaries here in Massachusetts. What are we seeing nationally on this front, Amanda? We could break a lot of records nationally, especially around governorships for women. A record 25 women made it through their primaries as major party candidates nationally. And there are also a few high-profile women v. women races, notably in Michigan and mm -hmm. in Oregon, which is a three-way all-women race. What are some of the challenges that women face other than just not seeing themselves in these positions? What else are we up against? Well, we know that voters scrutinize women's appearance, their hair, their tone of voice, and especially in this Instagram filter world that we're all living in now, our latest study showed that voters didn't have any tolerance for even wrinkles on a woman's collar or flyaway hair. So women have to do everything backwards and in heels, as they used yeah. to say about Ginger Rogers. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, it's true. I apologize yes. on behalf of all of us. <laughs> so many comments about your outfit. And I'll be gone now. Everybody comments about mine. <laughs> it's true. I'm Anytime better. we get a comment, it's about yeah. Kate's parents, not yeah. mine. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it's going to be an historic year in all likelihood. Why is it that women, when they do run, they win? And, and when do we think we might not even have to talk about this anymore? That we reach a threshold where we go, we don't have to talk about it anymore. Please women God, are, you know, when can we not yeah. have to talk about this anymore for women? That's my question. Well, as an organization that seeks to increase women's representation, we hope that we get put out of business someday and we don't have to talk about this yes. anymore. But women are still vastly underrepresented at so many different levels. And we're really seeing a groundswell now, but that momentum has been building for decades. Women have been rising through the ranks in local positions and legislative positions, and finally now are at the place where they're able to to run at the top of a ticket and certainly having a woman serving as vice president and so many other women in the cabinet and in high profile positions helps break down a lot of stereotypes in voters minds yeah we run our families we lead in business why can't this happen so so great such important work amanda hunter from the barbara lee family foundation thank you so much for coming in live and talking to us thank today thank you thanks amanda appreciate thank you. it